Welcome to our podcast where we delve into the fascinating world of finance, exploring topics ranging from personal budgeting and investing to market trends and economic analysis. In recent Bank of America news, there are significant stock rating downgrades to discuss, specifically for Cummins and Global Foundries. Bank of America has opted to downgrade Cummins stock rating from buy to neutral, suggesting that the stock is not anticipated to outperform the market anymore. Similarly, Global Foundry's stock rating has also been revised by the bank, moving from buy to neutral, reflecting a reduced potential for stock growth. This downward review could impact investors who held a bullish perspective on these stocks or were contemplating acquiring shares. On a more upbeat note, Bank of America maintains a positive view of the long-term bull market. The bank's positive outlook is bolstered by recent breakthroughs on the upside from big bases on the Dow and other pivotal U.S. equity indices, signaling further growth potential in the stock market. Investors are urged, as always, to consider these rating modifications and market insights meticulously. Carrying out additional research and consulting a financial advisor prior to making investment decisions is recommended. In recent Bank of Japan news, all eyes are fixed on the outcome of the meeting, as both the fate of the yen and the direction of the dollar are shrouded in uncertainty due to the bank's commitment to maintaining ultra-easy monetary policy. Known for keeping its negative interest rates unchanged despite widespread concerns and ambiguities, the Bank of Japan's strategic decision results in a depreciation of the yen. Investors are left grappling with uncertainty over inflation and the highly anticipated shifts in monetary policy. The Bank of Japan's unwavering adherence to ultra-easy policies harks back to the financial landscape of 1999, illustrating the bank's cautious approach in the face of a turbulent economic environment. With Asian shares responding diversely to the bank's decision, the steadfast commitment to maintaining these policies poses a stark contrast to the ongoing uncertainties that lay in the backdrop. Simultaneously, worldwide stocks are experiencing a rally fueled by optimism that central banks will uphold easy interest rate policies into the near future. This sentiment is creating a surge in the value of the dollar against the yen, pending the Bank of Japan's persistence with its ultra-loose policy. As market participants continue observing these developments, they strive to weave through the complex network of global monetary policies. In the latest news from the Bank of Korea, there is a growing concern from the governor regarding the increasing use of stable coins, a type of cryptocurrency designed to maintain a stable value by being pegged to a reserve asset like a national currency or a collection of currencies. The governor expressed the potential risk these stable coins pose to central bank operations in South Korea. These concerns mirror an expanding global apprehension about the impact of stablecoins on monetary and financial stability. The rising popularity of these stablecoins could impugn the authority and effectiveness of central banks, such as the Bank of Korea, in controlling the money supply and executing monetary policy. Coupled with these concerns, there's been a significant increase in South Korea's foreign currency deposit for the second month in a row, predominantly driven by high demand for the US and Japanese currencies. This growth in foreign currency deposits often indicates investor sentiment and can affect exchange rates, thereby impacting the overall health of the economy. Monitoring these developments in the financial sector is crucial, especially observing how central banks respond to the challenges brought by stablecoins. The potential influence on the monetary system and the capacity to implement monetary policy could necessitate regulatory and legislative actions to maintain stability and safeguard the interests of central banks and the broader economy. In the latest Credit Suisse news, after the banking giant's collapse, the Swiss financial regulator, FINMA, is advocating for increased regulatory powers. Some blame Swiss authorities for mishandling their oversight of Credit Suisse, which has led to discussions threat of nationalization. Responding to this fallout, FINMA is not only demanding greater powers, but also examining ways to adjust its current approach to prevent such financial crises. Stay tuned for more updates on this developing story. In recent Truist Financial News, the financial services company has announced increased price targets for several stocks across numerous sectors, underscoring their positive growth forecasts. Firstly, Truist Financial has increased United Community Bank's price target, showcasing their optimism regarding its growth potential and overall performance. They also raised Costco Wholesale's price target to an impressive $693, reflecting confidence in Costco's continued success and adaptability in the evolving retail landscape. The financial firm also recently increased Pinnacle Financial Partners' price target to $100, further demonstrating their belief in Pinnacle's strong fundamentals and future growth prospects. Finally, Dollar General's price target has been raised to $125, reflecting Truist's optimism about the company's upward trajectory in the retail industry and ability to leverage the growing demand for affordable goods. Investors should take note of these updates from Truist Financial, 
as they highlight the firm's positive outlook for these companies who demonstrate promising potential for growth and performance. UBS is undergoing some exciting developments, reflecting the optimism surrounding its future prospects. One such key development is the appointment of Nozomi Moria as the equity strategist for Japan, a position reinstated for the first time since 2016. This step underscores UBS's commitment to growing its presence in the Japanese market and offering valuable insights to investors, leveraging Moria's expertise. In a significant show of confidence, activist investor Shavian has invested heavily in UBS, acquiring a substantial stake worth $1.3 billion. Notably, Shavian has also placed an impressive 1.2 billion euros bet on UBS, expecting the bank to double its valuation by closing the gap with Morgan Stanley. These moves by Shavian highlight their belief in UBS's growth potential and its ability to provide high returns for shareholders, signaling they see UBS as being currently undervalued and thus an attractive investment. With these recent developments, UBS has been cast into the limelight, displaying great potential to thrive and close the valuation gap. Stakeholders and investors are eagerly observing UBS's progress and growth trajectory. In recent Binance news, the high-profile cryptocurrency exchange has reached a formidable settlement agreement with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC. Contrary to initial reports of a $1.5 billion resolution, the final figures indicate a staggering $2.7 billion in penalties and restitution. This figure marks one of the most substantial settlements in CFTC's history. The settlement has gained approval from the U.S. court, underlining the seriousness of the charges against Binance, including allegations of illegal trading activities and infringements of Know Your Customer, KYC, regulations. As one may anticipate, the substantial $2.7 billion penalty is likely to significantly influence Binance's operations and reputation in the future. In an unexpected maneuver, Binance's CEO, Changpeng Zhao, CZ, will also personally shoulder a $150 million fine. This decision demonstrates a significant personal commitment on his part towards resolving the legal dispute. This settlement agreement not only has implications for the running of the company but also bears heavy personal consequences for CZ. Stay tuned to Binance News for more updates on this ongoing case. BlackRock, the massive asset management firm, recently engaged in discussions with Nasdaq and the SEC about potential rule changes for listing a Bitcoin ETF. These talks come as BlackRock undergoes preparations for the launch of its iShares Bitcoin Trust, including changes to the ETF structure, in an attempt to secure SEC approval. Showing its commitment to mainstream digital currency adoption, BlackRock has altered its Bitcoin ETF proposal to incorporate cash redemptions. This move, coupled with the introduction of the IBIT ticker, has led to a surge in Bitcoin's value past the $43,000 mark. It is also a testament to BlackRock's continuous advancements towards the launch of its Bitcoin ETF. Aligning with SEC requirements, BlackRock further strategically adjusted its proposed spot Bitcoin ETF, underlining the firm's commitment to securing regulatory approval. Accompanying these developments, the recent rebound in Bitcoin prices led to a $67 million liquidation of BTC, highlighting the cryptocurrency's increasing market maturity. In the latest Kathy Wood and ARK Invest news, interesting portfolio changes from the renowned investment firm show a distinctive shift in its approach to the cryptocurrency market. ARK Invest, led by Kathy Wood, notably sold 800,000 shares of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, GBTC, reinforcing its altering perspective towards Bitcoin. Simultaneously, the firm demonstrated its dynamic investment strategy by making substantial acquisitions in other sectors. Wood's company invested a significant $6.5 million in Pinterest, a decision reflective of the social media platform's impressive 56% increase in its share price this year. Furthermore, ARK Invest showed its faith in the potential of blockchain technology, purchasing $25.7 million worth of block shares. These tactical moves by Kathy Wood and ARK Invest underline their adaptable and proactive approach to investing. As the market continues to evolve, it will be fascinating to watch how these decisions impact their portfolio. So, keep an eye out for more updates from Kathy Wood and ARK Invest. In the latest reports from China, a central bank advisor projects a promising future for the nation's economy, anticipating a potential 5% growth rate in 2024. This reflects the consistent efforts by the Chinese government to stimulate economic growth and promote sustainable development. Despite these optimistic growth projections, however, China's stock market has recently experienced a dip due to waning confidence in stimulus measures affecting investor sentiment. On the contrary, Hong Kong stocks have witnessed gains, potentially reflecting a different market outlook or region-specific factors. 
Moreover, China is channeling its focus on strategies targeting high-quality financial development, aiming to fortify the stability and efficiency of its financial system. This includes promoting innovation and risk management with the goal to establish a robust and sustainable financial sector that can support the nation's long-term economic objectives. With economic growth forecasts, market trends, and financial strategies being the key focus points, keep your eyes trained on China's evolving economic landscape. Stay tuned for more updates and insights from this region. In recent Consumer Financial Protection Bureau CFPB, news, a concerning report reveals higher fees and less favorable terms and conditions on college-sponsored credit cards and deposit accounts relative to comparable products. Throughout their annual analysis, the CFBP highlighted the onerous cost often associated with these accounts, propagated by an array of fees for annual maintenance, late payments, and even inactivity. Moreover, the report discovered that these college-endorsed financial products' contract terms are far from consumer-friendly. The intricate language and perplexing terms found in the agreements can be burdensome for students to comprehend fully. This ambiguity potentially leaves students at a disadvantage when needing to manage their finances wisely and evade unnecessary fees. The CFPB's findings nevertheless don't end here. The report further revealed that frequent overdrafters seemingly exploit overdraft services as an alternative form of credit. This observation indicates a broader issue surrounding financial vulnerability and inadequate access to traditional credit options amongst certain individuals. As the CFPB persistently campaigns for consumer protection within the finance sector, it's evident there is a considerable amount of work left to ensure fair and transparent financial products become universally accessible. The conclusions drawn from this report underline the necessity for tighter regulation and scrutiny in the college-endorsed credit card and deposit account sectors. Furthermore, the significance of affordable and attainable credit options for individuals, irrespective of their financial situation, is highlighted. In the latest SEC news, the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, is reviewing proposed crypto exchange-traded funds, ETFs, by Grayscale, Hashtags, and Pando. As these parties aim to launch ETFs tracking various cryptocurrencies, the SEC has initiated extra proceedings to accumulate more information prior to a final ruling. However, the SEC's decision on Ethereum-based ETFs has been delayed. Now scheduled for late May, the final announcement follows a prior postponement to 2024, resulting in mixed market feelings and increased uncertainty surrounding these financial products. While these developments unfold, Coinbase, a prominent cryptocurrency exchange, is asserting itself against the SEC's management of the crypto industry. The exchange submitted a proposal detailing a supervising framework inclusive of specific rules and guidelines. Yet, with Coinbase also appealing against the SEC's dismissal of proposed cryptocurrency regulations, the course of shaping these policies is unclear. Amid these regulatory ambiguities, it's worth noting that the SEC is proactively investigating digital assets that could be deemed unregistered securities. Its duty calls for rigorously checking these assets to guarantee securities law compliance. Despite this, indications propose that the SEC might be disposed to approve a spot Bitcoin ETF. Suggested by three key signals in market developments and regulatory advances, it raises hope for Bitcoin enthusiasts. However, any bullish trends continuance rests solely on an official SEC decision. As we conclude today's SEC updates, we see potential breakthroughs for Bitcoin-targeted ETFs in the near term. Stay with us for more updates on these important shifts in the crypto and regulatory environment. U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren has once again created a ripple in the cryptocurrency world, expressing specific concerns in a recent letter that received mixed reactions. She criticized the cryptocurrency industry's involvement of military personnel, government officials, and lawmakers, arguing that their association potentially compromises the integrity of crypto policies due to conflicts of interest. Furthermore, Warren took issue with the industry's hiring of former national security officials, suggesting that they are attempting to unduly influence cryptocurrency regulations. While Warren is renowned for her strict stance on Wall Street, her criticisms of the crypto industry have invoked varying responses. While some advocates argue that her concerns are legitimate and call for transparency and accountability in the industry, others regard her letter as merely a publicity stunt designed to attract attention and gain political advantage without providing substantial evidence. As the cryptocurrency market continues to expand and garner mainstream attention, it is anticipated that Warren's influence will persist in shaping cryptocurrency policies. The industry will closely monitor potential regulatory changes or actions resulting from Warren's continued scrutiny. In the latest news from Hashkey Capital, exciting progress unfolds from their Singapore operations, strengthening their position within both cryptocurrency and financial markets. Recently, 
Hashkey Capital secured a license to operate as a cryptocurrency business in Singapore, marking a pivotal expansion point in one of Asia's key financial hubs. Further reinforcing their influence within the Singaporean market, the Hashkey Capital Singapore subsidiary successfully obtained a Capital Market Services, CMS, license from the Monetary Authority of Singapore, MAS. The acquisition of the CMS license is a significant move, granting them the ability to provide a comprehensive range of financial services, including fund management services. Notably, this milestone presents Hashkey Capital Singapore subsidiary with new opportunities to cater to local investment needs and stimulate the growth of the Singaporean financial ecosystem. With this license in hand, they are set to deliver fund management services to their Singapore clients. The procurement of these licenses signifies Hashkey Capital's dedication to broadening their reach in the cryptocurrency and financial markets. By aligning with regulatory compliance, they are positioning themselves as a trusted, reliable player in the industry. Furthermore, the licensing of their Singapore subsidiary by Mars serves as a testament to the company's proficiency and readiness to operate in a regulated environment, offering top-grade financial services within Singapore and beyond. Stay tuned for more updates from Hashkey Capital as they continue their advancement in the cryptocurrency and financial markets. In the latest market beat news, we are taking a look at the recent ratings and price targets in the stock market. Analysts have, on average, given a hold rating for Cardinal Health Incorporated, NYSE, CAR, indicating that they are neither overly bullish nor bearish. It suggests they are saying investors should maintain their current positions. Turning our attention to Huntington Ingalls Industries, a consolidated price target of $224 has been issued by various brokerages. This anticipated price helps investors evaluate their financial decisions by predicting the stock's future trading value. Lastly, brokerages have set a price target of $28 Canadian dollars and 17 cents for Telus Company, TSE, T, which guides investors on whether the stock is currently undervalued or overvalued according to analysts. That concludes the recent stock ratings and price targets. Stay tuned for further updates. In the latest news from Michael Saylor, exciting developments are coming from Wall Street. As reported by Saylor himself, the introduction of Bitcoin spot ETFs, exchange-traded funds that allow investors to track the price movements of Bitcoin without actually owning the cryptocurrency, is being described as Wall Street's most significant breakthrough in the last three decades. This innovation is a way for investors to trade Bitcoin within a familiar and regulated market context, offering new opportunities for institutional participants. Michael Saylor, who also serves as the CEO of MicroStrategy, has shared his optimistic forecast for Bitcoin's price. Saylor suggests that as a growing number of institutional players begin to invest in the digital currency, the price of Bitcoin could surge to an astonishing $1 million. Such a prediction emphasizes the mounting assurance among significant investors about Bitcoin's long-term value and its position as an alternative investment. These advancements signify more than just the continued mainstream acceptance of Bitcoin. They also demonstrate the evolving landscape of the financial markets. With the entry of Bitcoin spot ETFs and the rising engagement from institutional investors, the financial industry is undergoing swift changes as Bitcoin leads the revolution. For more updates from Michael Saylor and the latest news in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency sphere, continue to stay tuned. In our Nasdaq news update, we have some compelling developments to report. The Nasdaq has hit a new year-to-date high, led by companies such as the Bitcoin mining heavyweight, Marathon, which saw a startling 10% ascend in stock value demonstrating strong market performance. The smaller cap index, Russell 2000, is also seeing significant activity, having reached a 16-month peak. Its performance in December outshines both large caps and the QQQ ETF, illustrating resilience and positive traction in the market. Transitioning to banking sector news, both Trust Co. Bank Corp. New York and Central Valley Community Bank Corp. NASDAQ, CBCY, have achieved significant milestones. Both companies' stock prices have climbed above their 200-day moving averages, hinting at potentially bullish trends and attracting investor interest. These developments reflect heightened investor confidence in these banking institutions' performance and future growth. Finally, Zillow Group has attained a new 12-month pinnacle at an impressive $58.28. This upward shift underlines the firm's prowess and ability to woo buyers in the current market. Stay tuned for more thrilling insights and progression from the vibrant world of finance and the stock market. That concludes our Nasdaq News Update. We have an exhilarating update in Ripple News, marking significant strides for the company in the cryptocurrency industry. The Central Bank of Ireland has officially registered Ripple as a crypto service provider, 
enhancing Ripple's credibility and affirming its position as a trusted provider of crypto-related services. Adding to these notable developments, David Schwartz, Ripple's chief technology officer, has shared intriguing insights into the price correlations between XRP and XLM, the native tokens of Ripple and Stellar respectively. Schwartz elucidated that the prices have generally trended in a similar direction over the years, albeit not consistently. This positioning provides a captivating perspective into the dynamics and market trends of these two significant cryptocurrencies. Ripple's devotion to the growth and adoption of cryptocurrencies in the United States is exemplified further by the CEO's recent reassurance to back pro-crypto candidates in the forthcoming 2024 U.S. election. With this commitment, Ripple aims to spur a supportive regulatory atmosphere, stimulate innovation, and advance the development of the crypto industry. Cumulatively, these updates from the Central Bank of Ireland, insights from Ripple's CTO, and support of pro-cryptocurrency candidates by the CEO, signify a promising future for Ripple. As the company persists in establishing milestones in the crypto universe, we anticipate more advancements and contributions to the ever-evolving digital currency landscape. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode on finance, where we explored the intricacies of managing your money and making smart financial decisions.